What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, um, we're finally getting the 7 Series back. I've been recording the process with Showman Motors, they've been really taking care of the 7 Series the entire time. If it does look like I'm mumbling, I have my biz lines in, so sorry if it sounds like I'm mumbling, but anyhow. Yeah guys, we finally got the 7 Series back from Showman Motors, so basically we took it in, uh, we took in the transmission, and they took it fully apart, uh, they replaced the gaskets is the first thing and then put it all back together put it back on the car and we drove it and it was still acting funny it was still acting weird it was still throwing transmission malfunctions so we took it back and then he ended up doing the solenoids and after we did the solenoids again he took everything apart and put everything back in we had to top off new fluids more fluids that didn't work so then we ended up t taking the transmission back out not back out but like pretty much started getting it again from the bottom and we moved the computer of the car and I, he didn't want to touch the computer because if he breaks it, that's like a huge issue. And I completely get that. So I said, you know what, for me at this point, I might as well risk it. So I grabbed the new computer, I took it out, tried taking it apart to get that little brown piece off of it. And uh, that part is not really supposed to be removed. So I accidentally broke that. That being said, we ended up with a new transmission a couple thousand dollars later. So then he went ahead and put that new transmission in for us. And then uh, pretty much as soon as he got the transmission in for us, the car wouldn't drive because it needs to get recoded. Um, so we had to get the car towed to another shop and then they got the coating done and everything for us. And then that's what we end up being in the video where I go and actually pick up the car for the first time. This is after a month of work on the car from taking it apart multiple times trying to repair it to um, trying to get a new transmission in there and then recoding it all and just getting the car back. So that's where we are in the video. It's been a long process, but it's definitely worth saving every single BMW out there. Whether it deserves saving or not, I don't know if this one would, you know, deserved or not with the high mileage and it is a salvage title, but you know what, who am I to say who deserves and who doesn't? So we're gonna save them all. Without further ado, let's get right back into the video. All right guys, we are in the car. First startup, the issue was that light. I really hope that light is gone. Um, so yeah, let's put down the e-brake now, or I think you have to start up the car, but finally got a new transmission and got So Showman just sent me the receipt. He hooked it up on uh, the, the install. So the install was 2,000 labor, um, including everything he's actually done to it because he did the transmission, the solenoid, everything, the gaskets. So everything in terms of labor was about $2,000. And then the actual um, transmission itself was another $2,000. Now, so the full transmission job at Showman would have been $4,000 roughly. So huge special shout out for him also hooking it up on uh, labor. He can also hook you guys up on labor as long as you guys just mention my name. So shout out to Showman for making this happen, honestly. I think he'll save you guys about 20% on the entire transaction. I know my cousin's going to him tomorrow uh, getting the X5 done. So if you guys want to get anything done at Showman Motors, you guys are in like the Davis, Sacramento County area, make sure to hit up Showman. So yeah, again, huge special shout out to Showman. Thank you so much for basically saving me a bunch of money on there because of $4,000, I bought the car for $33. So $4,000 have been an absolute nightmare. Uh, but uh, thankfully that's that. And then on top of that, we actually had to bring it here and get the transmission coded. I spent an additional 500 on that. So all in my cost was roughly about 27 uh 2700 plus a few other little fees here and there to get a new transmission in this car encoded so hopefully guys on the drive home it should be solid so uh first start up okay starts up boys <laughs> we've done so much maintenance to this car i'm just beyond stressed out well that is a sight to see the car is already in park that never happens when you start up the car it's normally in neutral and blinking in neutral so uh that is a good sign 167,051 miles um, everything's looking pretty good right here, guys. I remember AC doesn't work, it is stupid hot. Today we're gonna be trying to fix the AC today, so uh, okay. Let's go ahead and back this baby out. So far it's going in reverse, no transmission function. It's running pretty good, no issues. Guys, transmission is shifting so well. So yeah, we finally, finally, I'm hoping to God, hopefully I don't jinx it, but I mean, a couple of thousand dollars later, guys, we fixed the hoopty, which is absolutely amazing. Another thing is the clock spring broke, I don't know how exactly, but in the terms of the repair, it did end up breaking. Um, so it, that's the airbag light. All those other lights are because of the clock spring. So we are going to need to get a new clock spring put into this car. Not a crazy big deal because uh, as long as this baby's working, I'm happy. Guys, after a couple of years later, you guys are probably wondering where the 7 Series has been and uh, it's officially back home. It's been roughly about a month that I haven't had this, the keys to the car. And it's absolutely insane to think about I didn't have this car for an, for a month. I actually sometimes forget that I even have the car. 
Um, but yeah, it's filthy. It's absolutely filthy inside and out. Spider webs everywhere. We need to detail the interior and the exterior. We're gonna be doing all that hopefully in a little bit. But in the meantime, uh, we do need to button up a lot of things with the car. As I was driving here, I got a transmission malfunction light again. After a new transmission encoding, it's like every person's biggest fear when you do an engine swap or a transmission swap to get the exact same light you did before the, the actual swap occurred. But once I turned off the car and turned it back on, it, it went away and there was no issue. So I think it was a little bit of a fluke, a little bit of a car misunderstanding or the transmission hasn't been used in a very long time and now it's being put to use so it's just getting kind of adjusted because these these transmissions are very smart and they have like brains of their own and maybe I'm not driving the same way the previous driver drove or whatever so uh, that being said I'm not really too worried about that I think that will go ahead and fix itself the car is going in park it is driving no issues way better than it was but that's about $2,700 later uh, for any other person that doesn't have a good partnership it'll be somewhere of five to six thousand dollars for this transmission job uh, so huge special shout out to get to show my motors for helping me make this uh you know helping me save this bmw because this bmw honestly nobody else would have dumped five to six grand to fix this one so i spent about almost three grand of my own money to make sure this thing's back on the road so i mean there's a lot of things we got to do to the car to absolutely make it perfect like the ac and the climate control and all that stuff still doesn't work the radio still doesn't work all that stuff in the center is completely broken so what me and nick came out of the conclusion with is we probably need a whole new fuse box and the new module so we got a new module we got a new fuse box all the pins are in there so that's looking perfect so we shouldn't have any issues with this this should literally bolt on pretty easy and then we should be good to go we have these two guys for the front because as you guys know we don't have that and we don't have that and if you guys look at from the front there are a few little grill pieces missing there but the center one is like a major grill piece missing so i did get the center grill piece as for the side things i mean it's not that big of a deal i'm just gonna leave it for some reason a car like this those little pieces are over like maybe a hundred dollars so it's like i don't understand why that's worth a hundred dollars when i bought the bumper for almost two three hundred dollars actually the bumper for these cars guys this is an actual lci bumper lci bumpers go for like eight hundred dollars not even m sport but just lci this car is so expensive like i got it for a good like i got I got it for a cheap price, but it's not a car to buy cheap, especially for rebuilding because all the rest of the parts are very expensive. Like the engine's an N54, not a cheap engine whatsoever. The transmission, again, a $2,000 transmission in itself, not without any of the parts labor or anything like that. The bumpers, the front end, the headlights are super expensive. I had one of you guys actually help me with the bumper and the headlights, so huge special shout out to you. So yeah, the goal of today is to literally perfect a bunch of little things in the car and even fix the lights the errors i have another tail lamp because our tail lamp went bad and thankfully i had an extra tail lamp from another car that i pulled it from so we should be able to install this tail lamp it should be good to go and then ours our grill pieces for the the ac is like all peeling over here so we have a new ac uh pretty much set up right here so this is going to make the car pretty much look a lot better in the interior i just again want to perfect it we've done so much things to perfect this car so i got a lot of you know minor details to make this thing absolutely perfect and in the end hopefully we're going to wash it and uh, detail it and hopefully give a clean little cinematic of this bad boy in a little bit so first things first guys this thing's gonna need some wrap so uh three two one now that we have both of these guys wrapped up let's go ahead and just put a little bit of 3m and just slap it on and just like that guys it is looking so much better obviously the car needs a really good wash and i'm sorry for the lighting but you guys will see you once the car wash happens but uh that's looking so much better boys now that we have that and that both on let's go ahead and put in that grill right there because that's looking kind of funky Oh my god, guys, that is looking so much better. Next up is the fuse box. Let's hopefully be able to replace this easily. That would be pretty awesome. First things first, let's just go ahead and just take apart this glove box. And for those of you guys who are just wondering how to remove this, basically, you just have to take off this bottom airbag held down by two screws, remove this piece, which actually we're going to be replacing this as well while it's out. So let's leave that out for a second. Take out the two bolts here, three bolts here, pull this thing. Oh, it's pulled on the glove box. Pull this whole thing out, disconnect the wire. And then we should be able to pull out this glove box. I think there's one screw there and uh, should be it, just that one screw. Now that we have the glove box out, we're just gonna have to go ahead and disconnect all these cables. I believe there's one screw right there that we gotta remove and this whole thing should just come out and then we just have to unplug a bunch of wires. But, uh, but for those of you guys who are wondering how we actually found the issue, we disconnected this wire right here and saw that a couple of these pins are corroded and some are even missing. So uh, yeah, that's our issue. Alrighty guys, out with the old. Look how, like, how corroded this is. I don't know why this side is corroded. That's why we went ahead and just got one entirely new one. I'm gonna go ahead and go back and forth just 
just make sure all this is exactly the same, but this came from the exact same car, so everything should be good. But I'm just gonna double check everything to make sure everything's good and then go ahead and install this bad boy. Now that we've checked the fuses and installed the new one, just go ahead and reconnect everything. Hopefully I don't miss anything, but uh, at this point it should be just replugging everything and we should be good. Alrighty guys, this bad boy's in here now. The glove box is in there now. Um, We just have to put this piece back on, this piece back on, and then this we have to replace it. But before we actually get into that, let's just go ahead and finish up this glove box section. Bada bing, bada bang. Now hopefully we connected everything properly or that's gonna suck. We have to take all that back apart. <laughs> but anyway, we got all that stuff back and situated. Let's go ahead and remove the air vents. The reason I wanna remove it, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's just some slight peel right then and there. Just like, and it's super scratched up on the metal pieces. I have another one, so I kinda wanna replace it. I don't know how hard this is gonna be because it looks super sophisticated, but uh, I think you have to just remove these screws and then we should be good. So uh, yeah, here's the before, guys. Look how bad this one is. I know it, I, I'm a real like, perfectionist for some reason and uh, this just really bugs me. So uh, yeah, we are definitely junking this one. And just like that, guys, it is super dirty, but it's actually in pristine condition. So once we actually detail the interior, it's gonna look so much better. But yeah, we got that in, we got that in. Let's go ahead and reconnect the battery and see if this actually works. I mean, this is a 50-50 chance as well, but replace the entire fuse box. So if this still doesn't work, I really don't know what's gonna make it work. I mean, th this not working is not allowing us to have AC, not allowing us to have radio, so it just really sucks. So yeah, guys, moment of truth is connect the battery, check the car, and see if we got power to this bad boy. All right, guys, first test, putting the car in accessory mode. Oh my God! <laughs> Finally, guys, we have AC! Oh my God! Oh, God bless. I'm gonna have Nick just help me recode this just to make sure everything works, but I mean, oh my God, thank God. Even We even replaced this face. I don't know if you guys remember. So this face, all the buttons looking way better can Condition than it did. This one has a little bit of wear, but other than that, the other one had so much wear to it. Oh my God. Oh my God, we finally have AC in the car. So yeah guys, we went ahead and fixed that. We replaced the vents right here. We're gonna be detailing the car, like I said, in a little bit, but let's just keep knocking things out real quick. This thing is, this tail light is working properly. It is a little loose, so I wanna tighten that one up, but this one, for some reason, got flooded. So I don't know what happened to this. I think when we wrapped it, we didn't tighten it, because you guys can see, clearly, this thing is just not where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and take out the bolts and um, just completely replace this tail light, because it is just, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a goner. Guys, okay, first off, we officially saved the 7 Series. Now that everything is working here, the transmission is working, the engine's running, we have no leaks because we did the oil pan gaskets and pretty much all the other gaskets at Showman Motors. This car is officially, like even the transmission pan, the gaskets, the, the rear main seal, an entirely new transmission. We literally saved this thing. Yeah, it has 167,000 miles, but after doing all the maintenance, this thing can run another 100,000 miles. I mean, for goodness sake, we have a new transmission. As you guys can see, we only have two lights, and these two lights, I mean, the washer fluids, yeah, that's another light, but I mean, we can just put washer fluids. But the other two lights have to do with the clock spring. So the thing behind the airbag, that thing is went busted and through the airbag light and through a bunch of other lights. So all that can get easily fixed once we replace the clock spring. So I gotta go ahead and order a new clock spring, and then literally we're gonna have no lights on the dash because if we put down this thing, the car is in park, and I put on my seatbelt, we only have the traction light and then the steering wheel light because of the clock spring. And since the clocks, since the airbag connects to the clock spring, uh, the airbag light is there as well. So all this will literally be a clean dash once we get that clock spring in. I mean, even our temperature sensor is working. Guys, we fixed everything. I think it is time to finally get this thing a really good proper wash. Let's head down to the car wash, give it a proper wash. I am so stoked. All right, guys, a couple hours later, and uh, Nick really is the man. Guys, honestly, I wouldn't be able to have the channel that I have today if it wasn't for Nick. Nick honestly helps me with all the coating on my car and he literally fixed another big issue after I replaced the fuse box entirely. Um, yeah, the AC started working, but the AC wasn't actually working. Like you can turn on the AC, but it was warm. And I was like, maybe I just need to, you know, top off the antifreeze. Um, but all he did was coat in the module and then cold AC started coming out. And uh, the check engine light came on, a bunch of other lights came on, that's because of the fuse box as well. It just needed some coating. And other than the coating, he was able to tell me what kind of fuses that fuse box was missing. I thought they were literally identical, but I guess not. I think I was missing 
and a fuse or two. We replaced those two fuses and we were literally good to go. Nick is thinking about starting a YouTube channel and showing you guys pretty much how to diagnose your own car using BMW software. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash the like button, let me know down below, and let Nick know down below, would you guys support him if he started a YouTube channel? I definitely think you guys will because a lot of you guys ask me all the time, how do you code this, how do you code that, and I honestly don't know and if Nick can actually make a dedicated video showing me and all you guys how he does what he does, I think that would be like just a, the biggest BMW secret. It would be absolutely amazing. So smash that like button, guys. Without further ado, the car is pretty much ready. No, no check engine light. He recoded the transmission, hoping everything is good. We're gonna go ahead and drive out the car, go get it smogged, and hopefully it'll pass smog. I think I'm more. It should definitely pass smog. We literally fixed up everything on this car. And then other than the, the smog, just the clock spring, it'll have zero lights on the dash. It'll be absolutely mint. And then the transmission thing, we still need to figure that out. Maybe just low on fluid. So we might have to take it down and show them just to top off the fluids and we might be honestly good to go. So uh, we just got out of smog and uh, basically, unfortunately, we didn't pass. And that the only reason is, is because he said this is a newer car and newer cars, there's this one system for the PCV. And uh, basically that system isn't ready and it takes time to get ready. Apparently you have to drive the car in a certain way. Nick just pretty much cleared all the codes, reset all the modules. Uh, so yeah, it's, we're gonna have to actually drive this thing quite a bit. So I guess I'm gonna be daily it the next couple of days until uh, until all systems are ready. So yeah, there's no issues with the car in terms of why it's not passing smog, but uh, I don't know if you guys can hear this in the steering wheel. Ah, it's, it's grinding. Basically, the ribbon for the, the, the clock spring is just messed up. So, uh, anyhow, include the video, guys. Hopefully, in the next video, I'll be replacing the clock springs. We'll have no lights on the dash. So far, the transmission has not been acting up ever since Nick recoded, uh, basically, the, the, the module. Fingers crossed, we don't have a transmission issue, but uh, so far, so good. I've been driving it the last, like, 45 minutes and no issues no transmission lights no nothing so shout out to nick once again again guys if you guys want nick to show you guys how he does all of his secret formulas on my cars and really help and save the day and all of my builds make sure to comment down below let nick know that this is gonna officially conclude this video hopefully the next video will be getting an alignment done on this car i don't really know if i should but i mean why not we should at least perfect the alignment we've, we've come this far to pretty much perfect the car we're going to do the alignment do the clock spring we should have zero lights on the dash zero errors on the car nick actually checked the errors and there's not even a backup error there is the sunroof but we're going to go ahead and fix that because we fixed it earlier i think it's a fuse uh we'll get everything hopefully sorted in the next video but this video we're pretty much knocked out so many things to perfect this car hopefully in the next it'll be finishing up touching it all up doing a full interior detail and then having a photo shoot in cinematics. So if you guys are excited to see that the finishing touches of the 7 Series, like the 100% the finishing touches, make sure to smash that like button. I don't really want to all have it in this video, but a lot of unknown issues arise today. You fix something, something else comes up. You fix something, another thing comes up. So that's just BMWs there for you. And without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.